before the release of Windows 11, I wanted to gather information about this operating system, so I created the Windows Iceberg, containing 40 subjects as spread into 5 tiers. Hello world, by Tafir. Let's begin. Tier 1 Windows Microsoft Windows is a computer operating system introduced back in 1985. It was designed to display graphic elements and squared movable and resizable components called Windows, hence the OS name. According to NetMarketShare, back in October of 2020, this system represents the 87% of the total computer operating system market share. It competes with macOS, GNU Linux, and Chrome OS. The current version is Windows 10, but the new version, Windows 11, is set to release in less than a month, on October 5th. This leads us to... Windows 11. This is the upcoming version of the Microsoft system. It features a refined fluent design with a center taskbar, a new stored menu and rounded corners, leaving behind the little bits of Metro UI tiles that the previous version had. It also introduces a new widgets panel, snap groups, and Android application support. Even though this last feature has only been promised and will not come out with the system for now, you should expect it to arrive later. An earlier build was leaked sometime before the official announcement of the system that allowed us to test some of the new features. I actually made a video about it. There is a controversy with the requirements for the system, as it needs a 64-bit processor with 1 GHz and 2 cores, 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage. They do not seem like very demanding requirements until you read that you have to have a CPU with the second version of a trusted platform module. Module. Only processors that came out in recent years include this, making slightly older processors like an Intel Core of 7th generation or an AMD Ryzen of the 1st generation not compatible. Some people think that Windows 11 is actually a fusion of the now cancelled Windows 10X and the Sun Volley update. Windows 10X was a version of Windows 10 made specifically for dual screen computers. In this edition, we could already find things like a Center taskbar and a new start menu. I think there is a really big possibility for this to be true. News and Interests Widget This is a feature that was released to Windows 10 through an update on June 9, 2021. It consists of a preview of the weather that sits in your taskbar, and when you hover over it or click it, the full widget is displayed, containing now not only the weather but also some news provided by Bing and MSN. At first, this was an overheated feature, in my opinion, as most people do not like it for some reason, but you could always disable it with a right-click menu, and the other ones like me did like it, but the thing that was bothering us was that the preview was blurry, issue that was fixed with an update. Worst versions Windows 8 is the successor of Windows 7, and it is the third worst version of the OS. Microsoft thought it was a good idea to only focus on touch in a desktop system. They removed the start menu along with its buttons and replaced it with a weird start screen that introduced the Metro UI tiles. The thing was so confusing that most people had to search how to shut down their computer. Things improved with the 8.1 version, but not enough for it to be considered a good system. The second worst version is Windows Vista, that featured the arrow design also seen in the next OS iteration. The arrow style, in my opinion, has aged like milk, and the inclusion of it back then in 2007 made computers have a lot of performance issues. It also had a bad implementation of the user account control, as you often saw the dialogue asking for permission to do anything, and most of the drivers didn't work properly. Properly. But the award for the worst version goes to Windows Millennium Edition, or just Windows ME or ME. It was released back in the year 2000, being targeted to home users and it was a mess, mostly because of bugs that made it unstable and a pain to use. The Redmond's company had to release Windows XP to fix everything they did wrong with the Millennium Edition. Windows Update 
It is a service that takes care of downloading an update in the background, then installs it on your computer, and it's built in since Vista. On Windows 10, it also takes care of updating your drivers. A lot of people still hate it, because it forced the updates and restarted your system, even while you were using your PC. Also, sometimes the system restarts took hours to finish. Currently, it has improved, with an option to pause the updates for 7 days as well as a smarter restart schedule to avoid restarting at active hours. Cortana Cortana is Microsoft's personal assistant, like Apple's Siri or Google Assistant. The name Cortana is of their affectional AI character in the game series Halo. It is located next to the start button in the search bar, and can also be invoked with the shortcut Windows Plus C. It, or she, can perform different tasks like answering questions or scheduling reminders. I have not met anyone that uses it frequently or at all, but I guess that there is a small minority that does. You can disable it by right-clicking on the taskbar and then on Show Cortana button. Control Panel the control panel is a program used for changing settings for the system. It was introduced 36 years ago, in 1985, with the release of Windows 1.0. So, it is one of the oldest components of the Redman's company operating system. It currently has 8 sections, system and security, network and internet, hardware and sound, programs, user accounts, appearance and personalization, clock, language and region and ease of access. Microsoft has been trying to get rid of the control panel by hiding it, and recommends instead the settings app that has a cleaner and updated UI. The issue is that this app currently does not have more advanced settings, like managing the sample rate of a playback or recording device, for example. The lack of advanced settings is obvious, as often you'll find a link for an advanced setting on this program, just for to launch the control panel. Inconsistency it is not a secret that Windows is almost a synonym for inconsistency, as when you are looking for a setting, for example, the deeper you get, the older the UI looks. Most advanced programs like the control panel still have the Windows 7 UI, and some older ones even have bits of Windows 95. This issue always seems to get worse with every new version that features a new design. As a perfectionist, this is one of the things I hate the most about the OS. Tier 2. Windows Mobile and Windows Phone Windows Mobile was Microsoft's first mobile operating system. It came out back in 2000 and it is based on Windows CE, optimized mainly for chunky, ugly mobile devices that required styluses. Remember that the iPhone was not a thing yet. Windows Phone is Windows Mobile's successor and it came out in 2010. Its purpose was to compete with iOS and Android, featuring a Metro UI with live tiles. It had multiple versions. Windows Phone 7, Windows Phone 8, and Windows Phone 8.1, but it ended up being discontinued in 2017 due to a lack of users, but we are going to talk about that in some minutes. BSOD a BSOD or Blue Screen of Death is a system error that occurs for different reasons and forces the system to crash and restart. It receives this name because when restarting, a blue screen shows up informing you about the crash. Since Windows 8, a set emoticon face was added to the screen, along with an error code so that you can search more about the reason why your system crashed. System 32 Located at C backslash Windows backslash System32, this is an important folder that contains essential files required for the system to run properly. It is, or was, a very frequent joke on the internet to tell people to delete this folder, with the excuse of it being a virus or some heavy junk folder that worsen your performance. Of course, this is not true, and most people these days do not believe this so easily. Windows Defender 
It is the antivirus included with the system. It was initially based on Giant anti spyware made by a company named Giant, same one that was acquired by Microsoft, releasing Microsoft anti spyware on December 16 of 2004 for Windows 2000, XP, and Server 2003. Some people disliked the software and tried to disable it. I guess it is to improve performance or to install another antivirus software. In my opinion, this is the best antivirus for desktop, as it is built into the system and is totally free. Command Prompt also known as CMD, it is the main command line program. It is used to execute different commands like copying and pasting files or running programs that do not use a graphic interface. It resembles MS-DOS, the old operating system that Windows was based from, but this is going to be mentioned later. Some other alternatives have appeared over the years like PowerShell, but the most recent one is the Windows Terminal that has a fluent design and tabs. It is expected to be the default command line program for the next version of the system. And no, opening a command prompt instance does not necessarily mean that you are about to hack someone. Windows 9 after Windows 8, the obvious successor was going to be Windows 9, but Microsoft decided to skip this number and go directly with a 10 instead. The reason is that the company wanted to make people forget about the 8th version. It is a psychological trick to make you think that it is very different from its predecessor. If they had named it with the 9, you would think it is a direct continuation of the 8, even though some people consider Windows 8.1 to be the actual Windows 9. Win32. This refers to an API made a long time ago that helps you to develop applications that can run on all versions of Windows while being able to use features of the system unique to each version. Most programs are made using this technology that is now called the Windows API. To give an example of a program built with Win32, you have all the programs before Windows 8, like the control panel or the Windows Media Player. UWP UWP stands for Universal Windows Platform and is the successor of the Windows API. It was designed for making apps that can be compatible with Windows 10 devices. UWP features blend design and most apps built with it can be found on the Microsoft Store. It really has not been that popular and this issue is related with the Windows Phone paradox that we'll talk about later. The settings app and Groove Music are examples of how a UWP program looks like. Tier 3 Windows Sandbox this is an application that creates a temporary virtual machine, useful for executing files that you are not sure if they are safe. A lot of people do not know this program because it's hidden, as it is available just for Windows 10 Pro, so the home versions will not have it. And even if you have a Pro edition, you have to activate some things to get it to work. To enable the sandbox, do the following steps. First, check if you have virtualization enabled. You can see that with the task manager's performance tab. If you do not have it enabled, reboot your computer to access to the BIOS or UFI and turn on virtualization. Depending on your hardware, it could have a different name. Turn your computer on and open Turn Windows Features On or Off. Check the boxes for Hyper-V and Windows Sandbox. Reboot your computer and now you can access the sandbox. Safe mode. This is a feature that starts the system in a basic state, with just certain files and drivers. It is used mainly to know if some program or driver is causing a problem on your system, so most times you will not have to use it. To boot the OS in this mode, open the settings app, then go to update and security, then under advanced startup, select restart now. When your PC restarts, you'll see a screen with multiple options. Click on troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings and restart. After restarting, press 4 to start your computer in safe mode or 5 to start it in safe mode but with internet connection. Windows 10 Bloodware 
Since the latest OS iteration, Microsoft has been adding a lot of bloatware to everyone's computers. You only have to open the start menu to see a lot of apps that you didn't ask for, from stock UWP programs like Mail and Photos, to some worse stuff like Candy Crush. Sometimes it can be worse because your OEM adds stuff like the McAfee antivirus. You can delete most of these things but not all of them can be removed easily. The community has made some scripts to get rid of all the bloatware, but to be honest I haven't used any and if you plan on using one, do it at your own risk. Classic Games most likely this video will make you remember them. Games like Solitaire, Pinball, Minesweeper and the godlike Portable Place. Classic Windows games have been shipped since Windows 1.0, adding more with each major version until all of them were removed with the release of Windows 8. Currently you can find the Solitaire collection from the Microsoft Store, but it is a modern version of the games. Some people wonder what was their purpose and surprisingly it was not only to entertain the user, but mostly to teach beginners how to use the mouse, as that was a new thing back then. To be honest, I never learned to play Solitaire nor Minesweeper, but I do remember having a great time playing Purple Place. Windows NT a lot of people do not know that Windows used to be actually a program running on top of MS-DOS, an operating system that did not have a graphic interface. That is why Microsoft decided to make Windows an operating system by itself, creating Windows NT, that stands for New Technology. It was focused at first mainly for enterprises, but it ended up being merged with the standard home versions starting with Windows XP. Currently, the last versions of the OS are still based on on NT, and most likely they will remain that way. Regedit The registry editor, aka Regedit, is an executable file that you can use for creating and editing the registry keys and values. Some people use it to modify visual or technical aspects of the system, disable features that they dislike or to improve performance a little. I would not recommend you to change anything unless you know what you are doing because you can break something. God mode. This is a series of 262 shortcuts for settings, from known and easy ones to hidden ones. To get access to it, copy this string that you can find in the description, and then create a new folder wherever you want, but the desktop is preferred. Paste the text as the folder name. The folder will become a shortcut with a control panel preview icon that once opened will display all the setting shortcuts. Clippy. Clippy or Clippet was an assistant for beginners introduced in Microsoft Office 97, but it was removed in Microsoft Office 2007. It had the appearance of a paper clip with eyes, and its job was to help the users to get their work done quickly. But it was hated back then, because most users considered it intrusive and annoying, forcing the Redmond's company to turn the feature off by default in Office XP. In July 2021, Microsoft tweeted an image of Clippy and said that if the tweet got 20,000 likes, they were going to replace the paperclip emoji on Microsoft 365 with Clippy. It got even more likes than they were asking for and announced that they were going to replace it, but to this day I don't know if they actually did it. Tier 4 Windows 10 as mode this is a special version of Windows 10 that does not allow installing any programs that are not from the Microsoft Store, and it forces you to only be able to use Edge. It comes pre-installed in some laptops, but it can be disabled, allowing you to download usual apps. I do not know who thought that it was a good idea, as most programs are not on the Microsoft Store, but well. Pirated Windows Versions this was more popular with older versions, as Windows 10 started to allow users to use it without a license, but with limited features. You could often find computers with pirated versions of the OS on places like schools or internet cafes. I remember that one of my schools used pirated versions. Windows 10 had a UWP file explorer. 
Windows 10 has a hidden file explorer based on UWP with Fluent Design. It is mostly an experiment because it is very basic, missing some important features. In summary, to get access to it, you have to create a shortcut with a word string, similar to what you need to do to get the God mode. But I made a video about how to open this explorer step by step, so if you want to know how, click the card that you are seeing right now. Test Mode this is a mode that lets you install unsigned drivers and test them. Whenever Windows detects that you have installed an unsigned driver, it will install it in the test mode, indicated with a watermark that has information like the build number and addition. You can go back to the default mode by executing some commands. Patch Tuesday after Windows update, a patch fixing bugs of the previous update is released on Tuesday, hence the name. It occurs on the second or fourth Tuesday of each month. It is a this tier because most people do not know about this. Modified Windows versions like Android's custom ROMs, there are modified and unofficial versions of Windows, like the Windows 10 Ameliorated Edition that claims to remove all the unnecessary bloatware and even some stock programs. There are other versions as well that claim to improve performance and focus on gaming, but I wouldn't install one if I was you. Remember that this is a closed source operating system, so the people that make these versions don't really know what they could be removing. Think that does not happen with Android and its custom ROMs. For example, as Android is open source and anyone that has the knowledge required can understand how it works. Bill Gates stole the graphical user interface concept. Legend says Microsoft was working with Apple to port Office to the original Macintosh, being allowed to get access to the Mac's graphical interface to test the software that they were developing. Sometime later, Microsoft released Windows 1.0, featuring the concept of a graphical interface with resizable parts. Of course, Apple sued Microsoft, claiming that they copied their concept. The case ended five years later in favor of Microsoft because the court said that the graphical interface concept cannot be copyrighted. Some people say it was fair because Apple supposedly stole the idea itself from Xerox, but some others say it was unfair. Let me know what your opinion is in the comment section. Forbidden folder names there are some forbidden names that you can't use for a folder. Some of these ones are con, com1, aux, and null. Seriously, try to name a folder that way and you will not be able to do so. This happens most likely because those names match with a keyword similar to the ones that the system uses in its code. Telemetry Windows collects your data. Remember that setup you had to complete when you first ran the OS? Well, in one of those pages, there are a lot of settings that, if turned on, which they are by default, give permission to Microsoft to get your data from small things that can seem insignificant, like software compatibility info, to some creepy ones like location and speech recognition. Of course, the company has its excuses of why it wants to get this data, like Cortana speech recognition recognition or personalized ads, but what stops them from using it for other things? Windows Phone and Microsoft Store's Paradox Ever wonder why Windows Phone was not a success? Well, it was mainly for this, what I call the Windows Phone and Microsoft Store's Paradox. If you paid attention to the video closely, thank you, and you most likely have noticed that I dropped hints about this in previous subjects. It basically consists of the lack of applications that the Windows Phone had, that provoked that nobody wanted to get one of those phones, and without users, developers didn't really want to make versions of their app to work on these phones with few users. This prevents the platform from getting new apps, and again, without apps, no users, and without users, no apps, thus creating a paradox that only forced the remaining few users to get another phone to be able to use applications like YouTube. This is a paradox from which almost all new operating systems that want to compete with iOS, Android, and Windows will suffer off, and that is why it is so hard to compete in the operating system market. I am going to mention more about the consequences of this in some minutes. Microsoft Edge Monopolistic Practices 
With Windows 10, the Redman's company replaced the hated Internet Explorer with Edge, a browser that arrived with some pretty questionable practices, from simple ones like displaying a big banner whenever you search for another browser, telling you how great Edge is and why you should stay, to some worse ones like sending you notifications about switching to Edge or directly sending Edge as your default web browser after an update. Regardless of your opinions about the web browser, this is a very abusive move and is still present with the new Edge version based on Chromium. People have also found that in Windows 11, it is harder to switch to another browser because instead of just choosing Firefox as your new default, for example, you have to set Firefox as your default for opening HTML and HTM websites, PDF files and some other ones individually, thing that can bother most people enough to avoid trying to switch to another browser. You could say that this is good because it allows more options, and I agree at some point, but a simple set program to all defaults button will fix this. Microsoft Bob this is a software whose purpose was to make Windows 3.1 more user-friendly. It was released in 1995 as a response to Apple's user-friendly Macintosh. Bob displayed different elements as if they were parts of a house. For example, clicking on a pen would open the notepad. It was hardly criticized for being too childish, expensive, and it required some very demanding hardware for the time. It ended up being discontinued just one year after its release. Windows 10 default wallpaper is real. Look at the old Windows 10 wallpaper. You most likely think it was made out of CGI, right? Well, not really. In 2015, Microsoft posted a video where you can see how they built a small room and used things like smoke machines, crystal, and lasers to create a wallpaper. Too bad it was replaced with a very similar one. I like both, but I think the newer one was made with CGI. I think that not everyone knows this because Microsoft deleted the video. Fortunately, a channel called Signum Game Studio re-uploaded the footage, even though it has a worse audio quality. The video is in the description if you want to see it. Weird or low quality Microsoft Stores apps and games. The Microsoft Store has some weird, low-quality apps and games that you can find if you look beyond the popular software that appears first on the homepage, from clones of games to inappropriate content. I do not know if this is because the store barely reviews some of its apps or due to the fact that the store has few apps, forcing Microsoft to accept most ones even if they have a low quality. The situation will most likely improve with the release of the new Windows 11 Store that now accepts other type of applications that aren't necessarily UWP programs. Windows XP source code On September 24th, 2020, a comment on 4chan leaked the source code of Windows XP Service Pack 1 and 2003 server. Most of the code was written in the C and C++ programming languages. The code also contained a lot of works like hack, and reference to the fact that maybe that line of code was just a temporary fix, as well as some references and some cursing that I cannot read to you because YouTube. Everything sounds funny until you start realizing what this actually means. Remember that we mentioned earlier that Windows still has a lot of its previous versions, so this code could still be used to this day. And now that it is exposed, a lot of computers could be vulnerable to hackers. Maybe not modern ones, but keep in mind that there are a lot of PCs that still run Windows XP. Mostly ones that are for businesses or banks, and they are definitely more vulnerable. Some conspiracies that people made say that the entity that leaked this code could have been Microsoft itself, that knew that if it released the code, it would leave some older computers exposed to an attack, forcing them to upgrade there to newer versions that still have support. Microsoft works with the NSA. Multiple reports from different sources claim that Microsoft works closely with the United States National Security Agency. A report from CNN on 2013 says that, quote, the NSA allegedly listened in on numerous video calls made via Skype, which Microsoft bought two years ago, and Microsoft also worked with the FBI this year to give the NSA easier access to its cloud storage service, SkyDrive, which has more than 
250 million users worldwide. What do you think about this? Please let me know with a comment. Just be respectful and remember that maybe there's a chance that some stranger knows everything you do from your computer. Extra the next topic was not originally planned to appear on the iceberg, but while editing I found about this and thought that it would be a good idea to include it on the video as an extra for the people that stayed all the way until now. Windows XP or Edition Created by a user with the name of WobbyChip, this is a malware designed for Windows XP. The virus installs a fake update and when updating at 66%, an error message is shown saying that the setup will use a file called 666.sys. This is where everything starts to fall apart as the logo, background and music are replaced with creepy versions of them. When your computer finally boots up, there will be a red background with a skull. Everything is creepy here from the start menu button that now says that to the disturbing glitchy pictures that suddenly appear as your wallpaper. The task manager is disabled at launch so there is no easy way of stopping this. It is not recommended to try it out unless you use a virtual machine as it could really break your PC. This was all for today, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it a lot. If you subscribe, comment it and I will heart your comment. Goodbye world, see you in the next one.